Thank you for tuning in to the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afio Levi Israel. Now, if you're interested in helping us promote our brand, please feel free to donate to our cash app. Our cash app is uh, dollar sign Afiel Levi. That's A-P-H-I-E-L-L-E-V-I. And that'll go directly to the Forefront Radio so we can produce more incredible shows for you to listen to. Now, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download this free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you. You are now listening to The Forefront Radio, where we discuss history, the Bible, the history of the Israelites, science, and other matters. Bring it out. The history of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans as it relates to the Bible. Who were you prior to slavery? Who were you prior to colonization? These answers and more can be seen and heard as you listen to The Forefront Radio.
Israel. Yeah, with the difference in this fight. With the chosen. Greatest people on earth. Yeah, Israel. Come back to the more side. Yeah. In night vision video from a Navy destroyer, a mysterious flying triangle above the deck of the ship, the Pentagon confirming the images obtained by documentary filmmaker Jeremy Corbell were taken by Navy personnel, expected to be a part of a report on unidentified aerial phenomenon to be presented to Congress this summer. Already online, some skeptics say the images are caused by cameras trying to focus, but some of the objects go beyond just flying in the sky. One shows a spherical object dipping into the ocean, similar to an incident in Puerto Rico, where an object was tracked buzzing an airport, then flying into the water, popping back out before appearing to split into two and disappearing. Over the last several weeks, some of the nation's top former intelligence officials have been raising eyebrows. Look at that thing. It's rotating. Former CIA director R. James Woolsey said he knew of a case where a plane was paused in midair. A friend of mine was able to have his aircraft stop at 40,000 feet or so and not continue uh, uh, operating as a normal uh, aircraft. What was going on? In December, ex-CIA director John Brennan said it was arrogant to believe there are no other forms of life other than the ones on Earth. And former intelligence chief John Radcliffe says officials have been tracking technology beyond our capabilities. We're talking about objects picked up by satellite imagery that are difficult to explain. Like another incident off the coast of California in 2004, when a fighter squadron encountered an object that seemed to defy gravity. What do you think it is? I, I honestly don't know. I don't think that we have developed that technology. I don't think we developed it on this planet. Video from that encounter and two other incidents were officially released by the Pentagon last year. Oh, go ahead. Now new signs that the Pentagon could declassify more sightings of what they can't explain. And guys, now here's the thing about those last three F-18 videos. I recently asked uh, the former director of uh, the Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program at the Pentagon, point blank, are those the only videos that the government has? He said no. Those were probably the least compelling videos. And in some videos, you see an object about 50 feet away from the cockpit. Mm. Guys. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> and, uh, you, know, you know, I don't want to say I don't believe because I don't want them to come prove me wrong. Exactly. So, right. Right. I'm with you. And by the way, think about every person who thinks they've seen something oh. up in the sky. These are these are just the military confirmed ones. I don't like it. I'd I like don't. to go back just like <laughs> thinking that this isn't real. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. I'd like to be happy in my ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now. When it comes to space, too often, for too many years, our dreams of exploration and discovery were really squandered by politics and bureaucracy, and we knocked that out. So important for our psyche, what you're doing. It's going to be important monetarily and militarily, but so important for right up here, the psyche. We don't want China and Russia and other countries leading us. We've always led. We've gone way far afield for decades now, having to do with our subject today. We're going to be the leader by far. We're behind you a thousand percent. When it comes to defending America, it is not enough to merely have an American presence in space. We must have American dominance in space. So important. Very importantly, I'm here by directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a space force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big statement. I am instructing my administration to embrace the budding commercial space industry. We are modernizing out-of-date space regulations. They're way out of date. They haven't been changed in many, many years. 
And today, we are taking one more step to unleash the power of American ingenuity. In a few moments, I will sign a new directive to federal departments and agencies. They will work together with American industry to implement a state-of-the-art framework for space traffic management. Thank you for choosing the Forefront Radio. You're listening to part two. Um, we're discussing salvation of the nation of Israel. We're going to talk about uh, salvation of the nation of Israel and how we are going to be saved from the Messiah, the Black Messiah. So for those of you that aren't aware, Donald Trump, um, during his presidency, created what we know as the uh, Space Force. The Space Force was created as a military branch, a new military branch for the government. This Space Force is what many people don't know, created for the sole purpose of having military dominance in space. It was also revealed through the Pentagon that they revealed that there is an existence of what we call UFOs. So now think about this for a second. From a spiritual perspective, we call them aliens, but the Bible calls them angels. We call it aliens. Think about it. We call it aliens. But the Bible calls them angels. The nations are in fear of an invasion. The nations are in fear of an invasion. An invasion where black angels and a black God will come to the earth and set the record straight. That is what they're in, afraid of. They're afraid of invasion. That's what they're afraid of. The proof of this is in the Bible itself. For many people don't realize that the Bible talks about Christ coming to the earth and invading the world. One may ask the question, what is the proof of that? Let's look at a prayer and vision that the prophet Habakkuk had when he was in Shiganoth. Watch this. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2. It says, O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Teman. Teman, if people don't know, was one of the head centers of Edom. Edom is a so-called white man. So he's talking about the wise people out of Teman, out of Esau, right? God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Watch this. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hands, and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. So this is a great vision that Habakkuk is having of Christ coming back on the earth with fire and storm and whirlwind being able to destroy things, right? It says, verse six, he stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations. All these nations that are gathering together to fight against Christ, the Messiah and his angels, he's going to drive them asunder. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. Now watch this, jumping down to verse 12. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. 
thou this thresh the heathen in anger. Thou wentest forth for the salvation, salvation of thy people, even for the salvation with thine anointed, with thine anointed. The word anointed is the same word of Messiah or Christ. So God is coming here for the salvation of his people and he's coming with his anointed. Watch this. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. They came out as a war wind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. The United States of America is the head, the foundation of all wickedness on the earth. America, Babylon the Great, has been the head honcho of the slave trade, the head honcho at the United Nations. So it makes perfect sense that they would be the ones to be at the head of creating a military force to fight against Christ and the angels at the end of days. Watch this. Verse 16. When I heard, my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. The day of trouble is the day of judgment, folks. Then it says, when he cometh upon unto the people, he will invade them. He will invade them with his troops. Now, one may say, well, that is your interpretation of the Bible. That I don't I don't think that means that there's going to be an invasion where Christ is going to come and fight all the nations and go against you know, all the people and destroy all the wickedness on the earth. I don't think that at all. Okay, well, watch this. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Okay, watch this. And I saw heaven was open. Heaven is space, right? And behold, a white horse. Oh, a horse is like a chariot, right? Or some sort of vehicle, right? And he that was, a, he that was upon him, watch this, he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war, make war. His eyes were as the flame of fire, and on his heads were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. So we know this is talking about Jesus because Jesus Christ is called the Word in the Bible, right? And it's describing him in the very first book of Revelation in chapter one as having eyes a flame of fire and feet so dark it looked like it burned in a furnace, right? So this is how you know that he's coming for the salvation of his people and the destruction of the nations. Watch this. And the armies which were in heaven, the armies which were in heaven, where is heaven? Outer space, followed him upon white horses. So they were on their own chariots, right? Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Verse 15, and out of his mouth go forth a, a sharp sword. What is a sword used? A weapon is used for military action, for war. And we're going to find out what this sword is going to be used for. Watch that with it, he should smite the nations, smite the nations, smite the nations. So in one hand, we're reading in the Bible that Christ is going to save his people. On another hand, we're reading that Christ is going to smite the nations, meaning what? The salvation cannot come without the destruction of the wicked. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness, 
and wrath of Almighty God. So now think about that, folks. Jesus Christ, the Black Messiah, is going to save his people through the destruction of all wicked. Okay? All those that reign over us, all those that hate us, all those that have persecuted us for years, for centuries, Christ himself is going to come and fight these nations. Why do you think Donald Trump set up a space force? Why do you think the strongest military in the world is getting all the nations together to set up a space force? Why do you think Elon Musk and other billionaires are racking up billions of dollars to try to go to outer space because they know something that we don't know. The aliens are real, the UFOs are real, and the pilots of those vehicles are black, black people. This is fact. This is fact. They know that they have enslaved the children of Israel. They know that they have scattered us into all nations. They know that Christ is a black man. And they said, uh-oh, this Bible stuff is true. This Bible stuff is real. So we're going to have to prepare. We're going to have to go to war. And we're literally reading out of the Bible that armies are going to be in heaven, in the sky, in space. And these armies are going to come down to smite the nations, to pour fierceness and wrath. When we went back to Habakkuk, Habakkuk was so fearful of this vision that he said his lips quivered. He didn't want to be there on the day of judgment. He didn't want to see these things because he saw that Christ would invade the world with his troops, with his troops. So salvation cannot come without the destruction of the wicked. So now with that being said, now that we know that we're the children of Israel, now that we know that we're the people of the book, now that we know that black history is in the Bible, what should we do? Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So what does God require of us know that now that we know this information? O oh, now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, to keep, to keep, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good." Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also with all that is therein. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. So the Most High chose us and says, this is the requirement I have you. Not for the sake of you, but the sake of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Because the promises that he gave to our ancestors, he will save us from that destruction on the day of judgment. But the way for us, the prerequisite, what is required of us, is to put away the ways of America. Put away the wickedness of society. Put away the things that we once knew and thought we understood and start all over, start fresh, renew our minds every day under the prerequisites of the commandments of God and faith in the Black Messiah. So thank you for listening to the Forefront Radio. We appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we're doing a 30-day podcast challenge, and this today is another day where we've had an opportunity to share the truth and thank you so much for listening. Share this content with other listeners. Share this with your friends and family. And always know we love our people and we desire nothing but the best. This information is not presented to cause controversy. As a matter of fact, I don't care if people convert or not. I don't care if people decide that they disagree with the Bible. 
If you disagree with the Bible, that's totally fine. But you can't deny history. You can't deny prophecy. You can't deny science. Historically speaking, we went into slavery. Archaeologically speaking, there are images of black tombs where the kings of Egypt had black servants, which were the Jews or Hebrews of the Bible. There is historical documentation proving, for example, slavevoyages.org, where you can look up the names and shipping manifests of some of the ancient people that were put in slavery, and they had Hebraic sounding names. Buya, Kuya, Nehemya, Jeremya, Nehemaya. Okay. So I hope this information can help you to solidify the truth within your mind and to renew your mind, to gather your family together and re-examine the Bible from not just a religious perspective, but a book about our culture, a book, a book about our history, a book about who we are as a nation of people. Thank you for listening and may the most high be with us all. Shalom. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not want. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Give it my people, incline your head. Sayings of old, where she hath not heard, nor have known. We will not hide it from our children, showing the truth to each generation. To praise the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works, for He established a testimony and a law appointed for Israel. Which he hath commanded our fathers to make them known to the children. The thing that said that hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. The thing that said that hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. Nothing may set the hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments.
Thank you for listening to the Forefront Radio. We now have a cash app. The link is in the description of the page here on Anchor.fm, also on Spotify. We appreciate you listening in. We do have a few features that we are including now. We are selling a few products such as watches, perfumes, colognes, and other uh, products will be available for our Israelite community, as well as the general community of the population. We have a Facebook page. Just type in The Forefront Media, and you'll be able to get updates of of, uh, various shows that we drop when they do drop. Um, please do share this show if you like the show, and we do hope that you do love this show. And uh, tune in for more uh, episodes once we have them available. Thank you for listening to The Forefront. I'm your host, Afiel Levi Israel. <laughs>